All right, hello everyone. Um, Phil Moore here for the litmus test. We've just recorded our final episode for this series and we've now got, I've got my crew around me here and just behind the cameras there. We're gonna do a little debrief or um, um, post-mortem on the making of this series. So I'd like to introduce you to some of our behind the scenes talent here. We have to my left here, Fiona Lloyd, who is our associate producer in charge of um, sourcing all of our guests and all of our talent, massive job. Tina A. Wake, who is our art director and uh, became our producer for the packages, the Out and About packages, and, the, and interviewed most of those subjects. Mm. And Jane Austen. Austen. Because <laughs> right, I always forget, because you've got the same name as the author, and I think, is it right? Yeah, of course it's right. Jane Austen, <laughs> who was our floor manager, production manager on the show while we were we, so keeping things running, basically. And back there, <laughs> yes. we have Bob yes. Fitzgerald, yeah. our technical manager, my co producer, and our technical director for this entire series. <laughs> And we have Mary Middleton over there. Can we get a shot of Mary? There we are. Yeah. Uh, what was your job exactly, Mary? Can you describe it to us? Um, looking at a monitor, very, very small monitor, and <laughs> listening to the sound to make sure it sounds okay and looks okay. So quality control, effectively. Well, I started off as master controller, and I have no idea where I ended up. <laughs> <laughs> and over to the left, we also have Chris McKenzie, uh, who joined us after the couple of episodes and has been helping us with the sound uh, for these last several episodes. So Chris McKenzie there. Hello, Chris. Hey. Um, I'm going to start with the ladies here around me. Fiona, with you, how has it been trying to organise all of these, all organise the people for it? It has been <laughs> a huge job, but actually very rewarding. Um, the amount of creativity and talent on the coast is outstanding and it was a huge juggle for me. I've got three children, two jobs, a very understanding husband <laughs> um, and I've spent a lot of this year running away from my children to try and email and phone people but uh, yeah I'm astonished at yeah the wealth of talent that is surrounding us and it's opened my eyes really. The, the coast feels like a different place to me now and it's much richer. Do, um, do you think you would have taken this <coughs> job on if you'd known how much work was involved? <laughs> Possibly not. Um, I don't regret it for a minute though. It's been hair pulling out stuff, it's been... Uh, What's been your biggest challenge? <laughs> um, that you can talk about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think realistically just making the time to, to contact people and get to know them before judging, uh, you know, whether they're, they're going to work and if, are they going to work with the other people that you found. It's finding the balance um, between the right Yeah, people. making sure that the people you have got are going to be able to have a great conversation. And I think, because we've just recorded our final episode, <coughs> our literary episode, I think that was a great choice of panellists. Even though we were a little bit unsure because they're all very different types of people, um, very different worlds, but I, th I think it worked really mm. well. It was a great conversation. I, I think a lot of the um, the unsure shows that we've had have actually been the best shows. Mm. Um, people that we thought, uh, not necessarily the people, but the, the talent that they might have, was that going to work on that particular show? And it's usually been a yes. Well, I say you've been organising that, but obviously you haven't done it completely alone. We have no. had all of our crew contributing, offering suggestions to, for people to get. Uh, Tina, coming to you, <coughs> you started out uh, basically as our art director, so organising the set for each show and the artwork's going to be behind us and the layout and everything. Organising this, who the Maybe. painting of this, yeah. our backdrop, um, and then. Uh, Bob Doyle was originally our out and about producer, but he had to move on, so you took over that role as well uh, and doing many of those interviews. How's that load been? Well, I don't like being in front of the camera like right now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I like asking questions and it's great to meet the people that are so talented. And like you said, there's so many on the coast and it's really been um, good for me because I'm studying a diploma of screen and media on the side as well as everything else. Um, and so uh, to be the one asking the questions, it, it makes you formulate what the show's going to be about and it really gets you involved, like, root deep. It's really cool. I've really enjoyed it. And 
setting up and this if, every show? Well, it's fun because, you know, that's me. I'm creative, fashion designer by trade, screenwriter now. It's just fun. It gets me to do all the things I love, colour and um, has to match. Um, and, <laughs> and if I have to make a prop myself, I will. Yeah, and just meeting all the um, different artists. Sometimes I've had up to four people contributing to one show. Mm. So, being so on how have website, you found these people, for This example? is it. This you get on the um, arts group on the coast, the Facebook, and I just put a message out and go, right, I need these kind, I need photography, I need this. And then they get to me and then I have maybe 20 people say they all want to be on the show. So then I'm ringing 20 different people and 19 of them pull out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's, that's how it's been for every show is it's like I probably spend, I reckon, three days full time on the phone over the month. And then we probably go out and shoot probably two or three days as well for the interviews. And then even on the day before, sometimes say, oh, I can't have my art because it's in another show. And so then we have to quickly try and find something else. But luckily, there's a lot of choice. And actually, Mary's um, daughter, Melinda, who I went to school yeah. with, has saved us a few times as well. Yeah, we featured her. <laughs> where up. we go, yeah. quick, I need something. She goes, yeah, I've got some stuff we can use. So, you know. But it's, there is, like, she's like become our in-house artist. She has. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, um, I love networking with people and it's come in handy because if you make a mistake or someone cancels, you just ring someone else. <laughs> yeah, backup of the backup of the And backup. you're another mother as well. Your son, Arch, yeah. has been like our token uh, mascot. He's, he's yeah. here while we record somewhere. the show. He's back there somewhere at the moment. Yeah. Uh, and he's been very good, actually. Yeah. So he's learning the trade from the ground up. Well, as he says, he's a film kid now. He's a film kid. <laughs> he's had to sit through the hours and the hours. So. And he's been not just on our show, he's been out on film shoots when we've done our short films yeah. and things like well, that. Yeah, well, he's about to be a penguin and a squirrel in my TV show too, so he's going to be... So you've um, got all these other things going on on the side as well as this. As well, we're as actually we taking two shows to Cannes next year, two TV pilots we're going to be filming. So, yeah. You and Jane? Show. Well, I'm doing my kids' show, but Jane's helping me and I'm touching my microphone, sorry. And um, Jane and I have got a Sex and the City style um, comedy called Animal that we're both also starring in as well. Oh, okay, I don't know about I'm that I'm a little one. British harlot and she's... Um, <laughs> she's a our... therapist. <laughs> Uh, Jane, um, excellent. New age I don't want to talk about you being a new age sex therapist. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's a whole other show. <laughs> it is. I, I sort of start. dropped. I sort of dropped you in it here as being our floor manager slash production manager. On, and you said, "What, what, what is I, that? I what do I no do?" I have no idea about <laughs> anything at all. I think my job was to um, make sure things happen, but I didn't know what the things were that were going to happen. <laughs> So it's been, um, I've, I've really actually enjoyed it because I had to, what these girls had to play with all the art people and the people people. I had to play with technical people. And, um, and so I've been trying to figure out, um, well, I started off with trying to, you know, roll up the cable properly, which I have yet to succeed doing, <laughs> trying to be one of the blokes. So I've given up doing that now. But um, trying to figure out how it all works behind the scenes has been really interesting and challenging and trying to sort of decipher rundowns and um, have it all worked out and then something happens so we have to get the crew making sure that they've got the cameras in the right way and we've got things happening and it's a little bit of chaos going on in the back, back side where you probably don't see it because there's these amazing lights on you but there's been a couple of times where there's been um, a few little quick swift maneuvering going mm. on apparently well especially the first time we had somebody who actually just left a camera and didn't come back. So um, as, yeah. as floor manager, we had to cover that, which was fantastic. But um, I I've remember also- one occasion someone's crawling across the yeah, front. Yes, right. we, had a belly crawl, we had a belly crawl across, <laughs> trying to get under the cameras, which was not successful. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I don't know. But um, the-, the <laughs> Yes. And maybe mention My the beads. too. What's that? We've got beads yeah. rattling yeah. on the microphones. This is Chris McKenzie, our sound guy. Chris, how's go. it been for you dealing with all the sound issues we've oh, had? Oh, I've I moved it. I moved it up. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't know if we can actually get that away from them or... Because you can't take them off because it matches. No. Just hold <laughs> it. Do you want me to take it off? <laughs> the beads? Um, yeah, well... Six cameras. <laughs> there. Just hold it, that's better. fine. <laughs> no, 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 if you just, just go a little bit... Oh. <laughs> Why don't you take your next stop and make so it? So this is the challenge of the sound guy uh, when there's ladies yeah, on the there panel. Yeah, that's better. That's better. And we've got 
blinky it, ears. It wasn't, it wasn't all that bad, but when you start getting a bit animated. Oh, I tried not to be animated, sorry. No, it's good. Yeah, <laughs> and we have these issues when we have panel guests, and it's difficult for Chris to just jump in, for example, and, yeah. and fix it on the spot. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so that was when we were going live, which was incredibly challenging for the, the technical team. Um, when we were live running, streaming, live yeah. streaming through the NBN. So we had an amazing amount of um, stress behind the scenes, trying to make mm. sure that happened, and um, I'll have the technical people explaining everything well, let, that let went on. Well, let me actually go to Bob. Can we get a camera around there on Bob Fitzgerald, um, who's our technical director for this? Um, he's given us a lot of the gear that we're using here, uh, the vision switching and the cameras. He's put it all together every day. This, this, we're at the Rhythm Hut, and this place, it starts empty. We fill it up with all this gear, and Bob's in charge of that, making sure it all works. It's been a nightmare every month, I'm sure. <laughs> Bob. Four hours to sit up. <clears throat> yes, Bob. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge been for you? Um, I think it's people, actually, because um, at one stage we had about 25 people on the team here. And we started with 10 cameras or 9 cameras. Um, and we had so much technical baggage to carry, <laughs> it, it became unmanageable, in, bearing in mind that we're dealing with people who are really not in the industry, a lot of, you know, we have some industry people, but a lot of people who are doing it because they're either learning or it, it's a hobby or a goal of them. So it's hitting marks, you know, like when you, we're putting about three hours worth of content together a month, a one hour show plus a one hour um, long local legend and then the so-called five minute out and about, but that actually takes a day just to film that five minute piece. And it was just all these pieces coming together with a team of 20 odd people. Um, it's not managing the technical side of it, it's just getting all those people working together to produce a result. And I kind of like feel at the end of the day that all this work goes into the front end, getting guests, making the set, um, you know, and the cameras whirl. But what people actually see at the end of the day is kind of like the little bit that kind of I feel responsible for, which is like, wow, you know, so much rests on your shoulder that it's, it's a bit hard to, yeah. Making sure it all cuts together and flows and doesn't distract from the content of the show that we're making. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And this is and this is really weird because I'm actually cutting this as we're <laughs> <laughs> And the other challenge we had was we started out, um, we probably started out a bit too ambitious with the show. As you, as you mentioned, Jane, we were live streaming. We had a live audience coming in. We wanted to make it a live show as much as possible as well as a film that was a show that was recorded and posted to YouTube and on iTunes and everything. And we had technical issues with the streaming just because of NBN, etc., not getting it to work. Then we, when we finally did get it to work, it's like that's a whole other issue that makes Job's life even more, Bob's life even more complicated. So ultimately, in these last few episodes, we haven't been streaming. We haven't been bothering with the live audience. If they come, great, but we're not going to promote it as a live show. No. And we've scaled back how the production values have made the crew a bit smaller. Has that made your life easier, Bob? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, taking it offline, you know, not live, means we don't have to hit, have to hit those marks. Um, you know, when you're going live, you've got you've got to be ready. You've got to, you know, everything is a serial catastrophe, if you like. <laughs> you're just walking into another door that if it's not ready to open when you get there, you know, it all falls apart. And it just looks so bad when things go wrong when you're live that it's um, I don't know, it's not worth it, I think. Yeah. Uh, not for a show like this, it's just too complicated. Yeah, you'll find that in the first couple of pilot episodes in particular, uh, where we're still finding our feet, and in the ones that we live streamed, if you watched the live stream, uh, we've taken it down now, the recording of that, the edited version is not the same as the live stream. That's, we've taken out all the bad bits <laughs> in the <laughs> official version. So uh, if you were put off by that one, Keep watching because we get better. It, it gets a lot better. If you're watching this now and you, this is the first thing you see, go back and watch, well, maybe not the first couple of Fs, but even though the content is still really interesting, uh, you know, please forgive the technical issues. And many of the technical issues we had were sound at the beginning. Getting the sound to work right, because we were bouncing between two stages, the performance stage, which was the singers, and then this podcast stage. And we're trying to do it all at once. Uh, Chris, this is part of your role. 
try, uh, and we've now rationalised it down to really one, one at a time. We do the performance and now we do the podcast. But what was it like trying to do both at once back in the early episodes? Uh, as Bob was alluding to, <laughs> the, the problem is when it's going live, it has to be spot on in the first instance. And if, uh, if a lot of things are under different control, really it was, uh, it was impossible to... Thanks, mate. Sound. <laughs> yeah, I like sound. Um, yeah, it was impossible to actually have everything under control the way it was. Um, we even had two mixers, two people trying it. Uh, even that wasn't working for us. That's right. But it actually, it, it comes back to the rea reality of the difference between live performance and recorded or what's going to air, what you see. When you buy a DVD, you expect everything to be absolutely spot on. But if you go to a concert, uh, things happen and things don't quite sound right. Because you're there and it's happening at the time, you don't mind so much. But uh, so that's that's really the difference between live situations and, and live art is a lot more tolerant than produced art, which when it goes to the market as a produced item, everybody expects in this day and age that it's 100 percent. And uh, we we see that so much because of the expertise that's been developed around the world, I guess, by professional people and equipment. Equipment today is really can be superb. Um, but it's, at, it's all at the mercy of, <coughs> of how it's put together and how well prepared it is. So, as Bob was saying, really, we're, we're playing with your finished product, really, when we're doing this. So, it's, uh, I guess we, to aim to get it 100% is uh, really, you've really got to hone it down. Yeah, I guess when you watch a live show, like something on TV, and it's done well, you don't realise quite how much effort goes into putting, making that look that good and mm. that seamless. It's really hard to make a live, a truly live show be seamless. And you look at even a simple show like Q&A, which is kind of like what we are with our panel, um, putting together a show like that, which is live, um, the amount of people and effort and professionalism and craft that goes into that. And I think it's been a learning curve for all of us. Yeah. You know, it, it was ambitious and it, some of us had some skills and some experience in that, but even then it's like, I think we bit off more than we could chew with the, in the first yeah. couple of episodes. But it was good to actually work together on a constant basis. Yeah. I think, you know, we've done short films together and part of us, have, um, most of us have been part of different crews, but actually as a whole, we haven't actually used our whole group in the one show. So I think on a constant monthly basis, it makes us a tighter unit and so we'll be able yeah. to produce better films now. Sure. Let, let me ask, <laughs> yeah. what, Tina, what do you think has been the biggest lesson here that you've learned and that you, you can take away from this? For uh, you personally? I like the, because now I'm moving into TV, this is good for me to see multi-cameras it's good to see vision switching. Like I've heard different terminology now of Bob that I wouldn't have known just from working on a short film. So mm. I find it's expanded my word knowledge. <laughs> Your vocabulary. <laughs> yes, I don't know how to use the stuff, but at least I know that we need those people if we're going to do a TV show and things like that. So yeah. You realise what's involved now a bit oh, better. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm not technical, so totally respect Bob for everything he does. Mm. And Noel as well, who started out. Noel was one of our, it was yeah. head of camera department for our first several episodes. He had to, again, move on for other work. Um, he was invaluable in us getting those first episodes actually down yeah. and getting them shot as well as they were shot. Uh, Jane, what's been your main lesson um, takeaway from this? Well, yeah everything that Tina said, um, understanding all the, the different aspects that make up a live show has been incredibly invaluable to to help us to prepare for our projects. Um, but at the end of the day, filming is about relationship and communication. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing to have really clear vision, one vision, everyone working together, bringing in their skills or lack of skills, but willingness to to learn and um, it's been amazing to watch watch this happen. There's been no fights. <laughs> yeah, no fights yet. No, it's been... That's pretty good. That's and pretty there's been good. some stressful moments, as, yeah. as you've mentioned, people dropping out at the last minute, all of that. Yeah. Fiona, you've, you've experienced this. Yeah. What's your takeaway from all of this now? Um, pretty much what they said. <laughs> <laughs> I've loved learning the technical aspect, actually, as well. I, um, I think when you're creative, you often don't think about how to actually make that happen you just come up with ideas and see the end result in your head but you don't know the process of making that happen so that's been really exciting and um, but also I think for me I was an, a newcomer to the group realistically and I've enjoyed um, 
forming relationships with everybody here and really feel part of something bigger and hope that we can now go on as a unit and, you know, do things really well because we all have come to understand how we work and we can pull something together. <laughs> we can actually do it. And we've, uh, this, this whole show, this whole series was part of a production of CCUP mm. and as mentioned, we received a grant for this. Uh, and the three core values for CCUP was to uh, promote film production, uh, to, to actually do film production of some kind, that's this, uh, to promote uh, the film community up here um, and networking opportunities, which I think this is also fulfilling, and uh, training in film and TV production. And that's why we have apprentices. We've got people behind the camera, in particular one of your sons, Jane. Yes. <laughs> behind the camera over here. And he's been with us for several shows. Hey, 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 hang on, you're not on yet. <laughs> there we go. Oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Perfect start. Uh, so we, we've had a few people helping us out behind the camera. And our camera operator getting that shot is Andrew Cox, who's one of our more experienced crew. Can you swing well. yours, Will? <laughs> Will? Go on, shove your face back in front of it. Oh, you're going that camera? Where is it? There's Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> right. So it, it, this show has managed to fulfil, apart from fulfilling what was required by the grant, uh, <coughs> production, training and networking opportunities. And while this is the end of this series, uh, the litmus test as a brand, I think, will continue. And while I'm hoping we'll continue to do some of those long form interviews um, and maybe little out and about sections. Uh, f for current news and things like that on the Central Coast, uh, but we've expanded. But we've got other plans. We have web series, we have TV shows, we have all sorts of even feature films potentially that C Cup wants to get onto. Uh, and this has kind of dominated our time this year, uh, so we're moving on to other things uh, in part. Yes, the and hopefully. Thing I would like to say is <laughs> that actually we wanted this to be a conversation, and what we've found is that each show is a different topic, and so trying to get people on board in the short amount of time, so the month before the next show became a challenge. So I think in hindsight, if we'd have known, we would have tried to get more people involved in everything before we started, so that we had more people following it. I mean, this goes yeah. on forever mm. now, but yeah. at the same time, yeah, it's that month like, by month yeah. was like, now if, it's a different topic. If this had the money and we were doing it on a more regular basis, yep. then it would be a free-for-all show, whatever's most relevant for that week or that month, yep. you know, which is what our first pilot episodes were. They were a bit of everything. Because you could easily run an, a year's episode just on film and TV. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, we yeah. had so yeah. much talent to choose from yeah. that. You know, every, yeah. every episode, you could make a whole series out of just that topic yep. mm. easily. Mm. Uh, but, you know, we don't have the resources or the people or, or the money to do that <laughs> currently. <laughs> Unless you want to give us some money, give us lots of money, we might do it. We might consider <laughs> it. But there was good cross pollination between the different um, types of art, which is what we wanted to do. So I think we've mm. succeeded in that too. Indeed. And thank you to yeah. everyone who did yes. commit your time thank because you. we've had some incredible people come mm. through here. Um, I think we've all learned a lot. So big thank you to Thanks everybody. to all of our panel guests, all of our performers especially uh, for your time. And it, it's been educational for us and for our viewers out there, I think. And we've had a lot of good feedback, good positive feedback for the show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not, and we, our audience is not just here, even though we've kind of been Central Coast focused. Our audience has been na international, mm. really. Some of those interviews have been watched overseas uh, um, a lot, uh, like the ones with Shim, the ones with Don McAlpine, you know. Mm. These are major people, and hopefully we'll do more of those. Um, any other comments before we wrap this up? Oh, anyone? yeah. I have How a was comment. the experience for you, Phil? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I uh, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up getting a full-time job in the middle of this series, which I sort of needed to do. Uh, so I've become less available and much more reliant on you all to make this happen. So I would, I would rock up at like 6.30 and say, sit down and let's do a show. And I'd, I'd have very little to do with the preparation of that show in the last several episodes anyway. Um, but I was, I'm, and I'm thank you to all of you because I sort of got the ball rolling, developed the concept and worked out who's gonna do what and sort of oversaw those first few, and then I sort of, okay, I'm gonna to have to let, let you guys run with this ball because I'm, I'm a lot less available now. Uh, and I kind of had an idea of how much work was involved, but even then, you know, mm. technically it was a lot more than even I thought we could. Mm. But I'm like that, I tend to think big and then we'll scale it back if we have to, <laughs> and we'll, we'll make it work somehow. And we've made it work. We I think we've made it work, even the technical challenges, because I, I was doing most of the editing, for all of these episodes. Bob was cutting a lot of the out and abouts 
and I've been doing the local legends and editing the final shows. Uh, and I did this before when I was teaching at TAFE, we did a, a podcast similar to this, where again, I ended up having to do a lot of the editing. Uh, so I understood the process, but yeah, it's been a challenge all around. Uh, what have I learned? Uh, I do I things just, on the train. <laughs> I do a lot of work on the train, a lot of writing and prepping for this on the train. And even though we got the grant, a very generous grant to do this, it's like it was still wasn't enough mm. to do this properly, yeah. to pay people for the time involved, because we're all doing jobs, we've all got families. You know, to do this properly costs a lot of money to do it really well. And that's why we're sort of ending on this note for the moment. And I'm at a point where it's like, I've done so much work for free or for nothing, through my life, it's like I need money. That's why I'm, I've got, I'm teaching at the moment full time. You know, CCUP is a voluntary non-profit group and we're all doing this for nothing. We go out and we do our short film productions. Whatever budget we raise for those productions is basically just covering expenses. It's catering, it's travel, it's maybe hiring a bit of execute. No one's being paid yet. Um, I want to get us to a point where we can have a sustainable film ministry on the Central Coast, which means people get paid doing what they love, doing the art that they love. And that's been our biggest question with our panels. Mm. How do you make a living doing what mm. you do? And it's really, really hard. So thank you all for watching on that note. Yeah, on that note. <laughs> um, if you haven't seen everything that we've produced in the previous episodes, do look them up. Uh, litmustest.com will stay live. Uh, the YouTube channel is going to stay up there. And keep an eye out. Subscribe, because there will be more stuff coming along. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you.